I've never been much of a planner hopper. That's never really been my style. And yet here I am in March making changes. And I wanna to talk to you about it. Hi everybody, welcome back. If you're new here and this is your first time on my channel, my name is Cindy, I'm a dialysis patient, I'm a mom, I work for myself, and I love making videos about planners, the planner community, and especially consumerism and buying all of the things. Normally, I tend to be somebody who is like, no, just use what you have for a while and go with it. But there are times where it really feels like a change is necessary. Like I said, I'm not somebody who like jumps from planner to planner. That's not really my thing. As a matter of fact, it's like the opposite of my thing. That makes me anxious. I thrive on routine. I thrive on habit. I thrive on consistency in my life and the more I change things the less like anchored I feel I feel unmoored from my life I feel like my life is going to shambles I prefer to be able to like know to predict I'm a very predictable person not really what I say but in how I live my life allegedly it's funny like when you go on Instagram there are people who thrive on changing planners all the time they love the variety they love trying new things they love you know, testing stuff out and just bouncing around into what suits their purpose. And I'll be real with you. Not only is that not the way that I am, but sometimes when I see people doing that, it makes me anxious. It's not even my life and I get anxious because I'm so like ingrained in following my routines and following my habits. However, there are times when you really just need to make a change. And when you need to make a change, it can be very easy to succumb to the, whatever the new hotness is on planner Instagram. So as an example, how many of you within the first couple of months of 2023 have jumped fully clothed into the Hobonichi pool, I ask you. Be honest, let me know in the comments. So I'm currently in this situation, not the Hobonichi week situation, I don't want that, but like in needing to make a change, like a specific change. I'm in this situation right now and I thought that it could be helpful for you for me to kind of walk through my process, my thought process on it, and give you maybe some tips in case you find yourself in a place where you need to make a change and you don't want to get just sucked into whatever the shiny thing is on Instagram. You want to make it in a more uh, rational, <laughs> thoughtful, measured manner. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So first and foremost, one tip that I have for you, this actually isn't relevant to my current situation, but it is probably the most practical tip I could give you if you are not in a place where you need to make a change right now, but you want to kind of stay abreast of potential changes that could need to be changed. I didn't think that through very well, did I? Anyway, uh, and the biggest tip for this is to check in regularly with your system. Now, I don't mean check in all the time. That is a recipe for wanting to buy the new hotness because you, you will like start seeing problems that aren't even there, the more often that you like ask yourself, is there a problem? Sooner or later, your brain's gonna be like, fuck yeah, there's a problem, go spend money. I tend to do it, I tend to at least have a kind of casual think through at least once a quarter and that's usually work related. I do the HB90 system and so every quarter I wanna like tweak it to like make it a little bit better for me. With my personal life planner, six months seems to be my usual rhythm. It's not something I fully schedule, it's just something I think about. Some of the time it's because I'm using a six month planner so it just makes sense. Other times it's because mid-year tends to be the time when I might wanna make changes. And if you've been following me for a long time, then you know that that tends to be usually in the summertime is when I make a change and then usually we get to the end of the year and I'm like, fuck, I need to make a change. There's just something about having a rhythmic kind of check in with yourself to make sure that you are okay with everything that you're using right now. Now, I'm not talking about doing a massive evaluation. I actually have a video on evaluating your planner system and trying to figure out what's gonna be best for you and I will link that down below, but that's actually not what I'm talking about. That's pretty intense and that is the big guns to pull out when you have a problem. More on that later. What I usually do is just ask myself a few simple questions and I go with what my gut is telling me. Is everything working? Does it feel good? Do I feel like I'm in a rhythm? Do I feel like this is comfortable? Not bored. Boring is not a problem. Now it could be a problem and that's a whole different story. But for me, it's more like, does it feel, how did I see it? I was watching an interview with Melanie Linsky, the actress, I love her. And she had worked on The Last of Us with Pedro Pascal. And she talked about how when she was around him, she just felt 
at ease and comfortable, like slipping into a warm bath. And despite the fact that he's a hottie, like that sounds just so delightful. And that's what I want my planner system to feel like. I want to be able to feel like it's a warm bath. It doesn't need to be exciting. It doesn't need to be fantastic. It needs to be comfortable and like, like a companion to me. Does it feel that way? Ask your gut. How are you feeling about it? Are you forcing it? Are you feeling good about it? What does it feel like? Now, if something feels off, that could be a time to go through that evaluation process I was talking about and like just check in and see where the thing is broken. The thing to watch out for is to catch yourself evaluating your planner system because you have FOMO for something you've seen. Like, don't do it randomly. Like, let's just say you're on the internet and everybody and their mother is using the Sterling Ink Common Planner and you're like, holy shit, that looks awesome. Is my planner system working for me? Do I need the Sterling Ink? It shouldn't be driven by something you're seeing. It should be driven by how you're feeling about what you're using. That is not always easy. In this world of marketing and everything being marketed to us, it can be very, very easy to confuse wanting something because it looks new and fun over needing something, over knowing that that thing could actually be helpful for you. Getting into a rhythm of evaluating whether your planner is working for you or not in a way that is completely separated from wanting something will help you practice those gut skills without you know, having the additional pressure of the thing that you really want that everybody and their mother got sent for free. And the Sterling, I don't know if the Sterling ink got sent to anybody for free. Certainly didn't for me. I purchased that with my own goddamn money. Thanks. The second tip that I want to give you is that sometimes making an abrupt change can take time to settle in. Sometimes it can feel a little off. It can feel a little shitty. And what do I mean by that? Sometimes the feeling of wanting to change your planner is not necessarily driven by the system that you're using, but more so driven by kind of like outside sources. For example, back in 2020, uh, I stopped using Erin Condren. At the time, it was working really well for me, but for various reasons, I didn't really want to use the planner anymore. There were reasons that had nothing to do with the system and everything to do with the brand. Because the change had nothing to do with how I'm using the planner and everything to do with other things, because I made the change abruptly without any forethought, it took me months to find a new system. I kind of bounced from thing to thing and tried things out. I got myself into the situation that I really don't like to be in. I like to make measured changes. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I like my changes to be made with a lot of thought and with a lot of preparation so that when I go into it, I'm kind of setting myself up for success. I did not set myself up for success in 2020. I just fucking dropped it and started using something else. And it took me a while to find, it took me some experimentation to find something. If you have to make an abrupt change in something that's working, but you have to make the change for whatever reason, let's say you, you love your planner system, but you spilled your coffee on it, fucking wrecked it, and you can't really use it. It's like unusable and it's sold out. That's an abrupt change. That was not something that had anything to do with your system that you were using and everything to do with an outside coffee. <laughs> If you have to make an abrupt change, just know that it is normal to have to bounce from thing to thing, but I would highly suggest you stop and you really, again, go back to, I'm gonna keep referencing you to that evaluation video because it really does have some thoughts on how to really kind of thoughtfully decide on what you wanna use. If you have to make an abrupt change, really both expect that it's gonna take some time to settle into your next thing and that it may require more thought and more of a process. That is a very big warning stage and I fell into it. I fell into that trap of being like, well, I'm not using this anymore, let's buy all the things. I fucking did that. It's a lot of money and I have money set aside for my channel to buy stuff like that and it still hurt. So like, be very careful if you have to make that sort of a change. On the other hand, sometimes you have a problem with your system that you don't immediately recognize. It might be something that is there, but it's not really like present in your mind and maybe the symptoms of it are coming to the surface and you're dealing with them, but not recognizing what the root cause of it is. For me, an example of that is a couple years ago, I work for myself and I do a lot of stuff around the house and like things outside the house. You know, my mom and got dialysis, all the things. And at the time I was keeping all of my work planning and all of my 
personal plan, all of my goal setting all together in a couple of books. I wasn't separating anything. I was having more and more trouble setting boundaries and being really specific with things in my work life and things in my personal life. I was having a lot of trouble kind of keeping things on track. I was feeling very muddled and very disorganized even though I'd had a system that had worked for me for a long time. So that whole time I'm treating the symptoms. I'm like, oh, I'm burned out. Let's have some self care. Oh, it's not working for me. How do I, what do I, um, what other things can I do with work to make it like be a little bit less burnout causing or whatever. When I realized what it was, was that my boundary setting problem was manifested in big part because I wasn't compartmentalizing work and personal life. And when you work for yourself from home, boundary setting is really important. So the first successful, really big boundary I set was separating those two things. And that helped me set other boundaries in my life. The problem I ran into, and this is the thing to warn you about, is when you have an ongoing situation that maybe you haven't recognized, that you've been treating the symptoms of, that you finally realize what the problem is and you want to fix that, the fix is not immediate. I figured out what I wanted my new systems to be and I started leaning into that and it still was a little trial and error. It was probably a good six months or so before I really felt like back into that warm place, back into that warm bath of a planner system. But I told myself, if it took this long to recognize, if it took this long to really figure out, then the solution is not gonna be immediate. The solution's gonna take a little time. Think about when you're sick. The longer you're sick, the more an infection has time to set into you. Even if they give you medication, it still takes time for it to heal. It's the same kind of situation. So just don't be hard on yourself and give yourself the space. If you have really decided that this new thing is gonna work for you, this change could work for you, don't just give it a week and then give up on it and go buy something else. Give it some time to breathe. Give yourself some time to heal from whatever the problem is because it will take a little bit of time but it is worth it and then if you've waited for a few months and it still hasn't worked for you then maybe you need to be trying a different thing but generally speaking FOMO can once again rear its ugly head when you are convinced that this new thing you're trying isn't working and maybe this other new thing will work and then you buy that and then maybe this other new thing will work you got to give it some time however sometimes the problem is not one that festers, that you don't notice, that you're noticing symptoms, but not the actual cause of the problem. Sometimes you know what the cause of the problem is. Sometimes something happens in your life and something shifts and what you're using isn't working for you anymore. Maybe you've had a work planner that has worked really great for you in your current job, but then you get a different job and this job suddenly requires a lot more note taking or a lot more sensitive information and the planner you were using is no longer appropriate for that job. What about if you are somebody who has heavily leaned on your planner to organize your kids' schedules and then you're an empty nester and the system you were using suddenly feels too expansive or bleak or whatever, right? Those can be sec like situations where you're like, oh, I, I know my planner's not working anymore because my circumstances have changed. What about if you have been just fine using a certain digital system to keep track of all of your work projects and then suddenly you're on dialysis five days a week and you really wanna get some work done because you're stuck in this chair, but the system you've been using really doesn't work out for you when you're sitting there on your iPad typing one-handed and you start to get frustrated because this four hour block five days a week is suddenly useless to you for work and all you're doing is playing Plants vs. Zombies because your work system is not compatible with how you are currently needing to use time. That's where I'm at right now, if you couldn't tell. So I have been using ClickUp for my work project planning and it's been working really wonderfully for me. I've loved using it. I've struggled to do the work that I need to do on my iPad while I'm sitting in my dialysis chair one-handed. The iPad app for ClickUp is just not conducive to the work I need to do in the situation that I find myself in. It's a problem. It's a problem to the point where like, it didn't take me long. I've been doing dialysis at home now for a little over a month and I didn't even try doing work for the first week or so. And at this point, after a couple of weeks of trying, I'm like ready to throw it out. Like I know exactly what the problem is and I, I'm, I'm, it's right there. I know what it is. If you're in this circumstance, making a change can manifest in a couple of different ways. You could enter into the floundering stage like I was after I dropped Aaron Condren, bouncing from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing, 
trying to figure out something to fix the problem that you're having. If you're in that situation, I fully recommend, again, I swear to God, this is like an advertisement for that video, but like go to the evaluation video, run through those steps. I also have a finding planner piece class on Skillshare that could be helpful for you. But if you really have no idea what to do to fix the problem, then rather than buying a bunch of shit, sit down and define what it is that you need and then use that as a shopping kind of guidance. But the, the piece here that I really want to talk about, and this is something you may not have thought you've ever would hear from me. The grass can sometimes be greener on the other side. You might have had your eye on something that you thought could be a really good solution for you for a while. And this thing that's broken, maybe this thing you've had your eye on is the right thing to pick. There are times when we are kind of drawn to something because we think that it could actually fit into the puzzle hole that like the little shape that your current situation is not fitting into. But how do you know? How do you know if it's just regular fear of missing out, regular new hotness coming your way, or if it's actually something that's like, no, calling to you with like the planner spirit saying, this is your new, this is your new planner. That's what they sound like. I would never thought to have said that the grass could be greener on the other side because I'm usually a proponent of the grass is usually not greener. Like you think it is and then you go and you buy something and you're just buying more shit and your wallet is lighter and you got more crap in your house and you're still unsatisfied. But sometimes, sometimes it might be the right choice. How do you know that? First, identify what the problem is. This is really important. Even if you're not gonna go through the whole planner evaluation thing, if you have something that's like in the front of your mind as a replacement for what you want to get rid of, you need to know what the problem is in the first place. For me, the problem was that I was having a lot of trouble utilizing this system while I was in my dialysis chair. Aesthetically, the way that it's worked for me, it's always been fine, but when it came to actually using it in this particular circumstance, it was pretty untenable for me. So what I needed was something that could be what I wanted, all the aesthetic and the things that I wanted, the flexibility and everything like that, but be usable while I'm on dialysis so that I can actually get some work done. So if you have a FOMO item, something that you think might actually be the solution in your head already, before you go out and you buy it, ask yourself, is the thing that you want appropriate to fix the problem that you're having? Will it work with the rest of your system? Will it work with your style, with your habits, with the other parts of your, like the things you know about yourself and the planners that you love? If you have been struggling with something and you see this like the Hobonichi Weeks as an example, but you know from past experience that tiny planners don't, you want lots and lots of space. You're an eight and a half by 11 kind of person then chances are it's not gonna be appropriate to fix the problem unless the problem was you want something to carry with you everywhere and just make a few notes. Maybe it is gonna fix the problem. Maybe you need to kind of break out of that style. You want to be honest with yourself. Like what, what is the problem? Does this thing I want, is it going to solve the problem while fitting into my life and my systems? So for me, the item that I have been eyeballing is Notion. Now, if you've been following, you know I've used Notion before. You know I've used it. You know that I was struggling to get it set up the way that I wanted to. Recently, a content creator that I follow named Jules Acri uh, released her business Notion pack that had some content creator stuff in it. And it was basically exactly what I wanted, but I just didn't have the energy or the fucks to give or the frankly, the fucking brain power to set Notion up in that way. Notion is very flexible, but it requires a lot of like upfront figuring out. And I was so impatient with it. That's why I went to ClickUp. But when she came out with this, I was like, hmm, hmm. That's the solution to my problem. But I didn't know if Notion was gonna work any better than ClickUp on my iPad when I was sitting there. So what I did was I just opened up my old Notion and opened up a couple of just blank things. They weren't her situation, but they were just something I could use and tried to do some of the work that I was trying to do on ClickUp to no avail. And it worked so much better. It was so easy. I was able to do work in like a quarter of the time like I didn't even have to fight with it the way I had to fight with ClickUp on my iPad. And I was like, this actually could work, which is my second kind of tip here is to test it out. If you have the opportunity to get downloads, if you have the opportunity to try something for free before you spend any money, do that. Give it a try before you spend the money on it. Double check that the thing that you think will be a good situation is actually potentially a good situation for you. And then finally, the question you wanna ask is, is it gonna be worth the money for you to spend on this thing to solve this problem? Is the problem, and the cost, are they at least worth it in relationship to each other? Because if something costs $200 and 
your problem is like a $25 problem. Do you see what I'm saying? Like if you can kind of assign value, is the money that you would spend on this solution worth solving the problem? And if it is, then maybe give it a try. So that's what I did. I wound up buying the Down to Biz Notion Pack and within a week I had all of my shit transferred over, did it all while I was on dialysis and I have been using, I'm still building up to it, but it is working better for me. Now, like I said, I still have a ClickUp subscription. It's gonna last me for several more months. So it's still sitting there. And if I decide I wanna switch back, I can switch back. But this has solved the pain point, the problem that I had, which was working while I was on dialysis. It has solved it and I am very glad that it has solved it. The final tip I have in this situation is to give it some time. Like I said before, you're never gonna be settled into something immediately. It takes time, so give yourself some time. If you really make the thoughtful choice that this thing is gonna solve my problem, don't expect it to be solved right away. Give it some space, give it some time. That's what I'm doing right now, and we will see. I'll report back in on with you in a month or so and let you know how I'm feeling about it. But that's kind of how I go about making changes. What I don't want to do is make changes purely on like aesthetic reasons, purely on shopping reasons, wanting to get the dopamine hit of new stuff. I don't want to make changes to my system. It's not because of the money, although that is a thing. It's not because of like having too much shit although that is also a thing. Ultimately, the reason I make all these videos about consumerism, the reason I make all of these videos about really being thoughtful on choosing your planning system is because for a lot of us, our planners help us navigate our lives, however it might look, whether you have executive function issues and need your planner to help remind you to brush your teeth, whether you are doing a lot of project-based work and you need it to keep track of all of your notes, whether you have kids and you have schedules to keep track of, whether you are in a medical place and you have a lot of medical shit to keep track of, or all of the above, or none of the above. Our planners, the reason we have them ultimately is to help us get through our lives in a way that is just better, to help us live our lives, to help us live our lives in a way that is less just going through the motions. The more you fuck with that system, unless that's something you really enjoy, if you're fucking with it purely because you're driven by social media and shopping and everything else, then that foundation of your life can feel shaky. Being able to make choices that have thought put into them and are measured and careful means that the repercussions on my life will not be like this, they'll be more like this. And that's what I'm going for. Now you may be different. You may be like, nah, but Cindy, a new planner every month makes me happy. Sarah from Heart Breathings, she changes out her binder system and like makes everything interesting. She resets it every single month and that's her way of doing things. I can't do that. That's not my style, but that's her style. Know your style and know why you're doing things and make your decisions with thought and hopefully that will make the rest of your life flow smoothly with the help of your planners. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Has there been a time where you've had to make a change like that? Or any other tips you have for people who are trying to make a change in their planner system, but trying to do it without being influenced by all of the noise out on the internet? Leave your tips down below. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, friends, peace.